such a Bhagavan Buddha is um, Sugata, ni, 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 uh, Tathagata Arahat. Now we have Samyak Sambodhi. Is Yang Tabarjoba Sangi meaning um, a perfect and complete Buddha? You can understand this as perfect and completely awakened. Because <clears throat> the term um, Buddha, uh, it, it refers to um, two things, um, mainly two things. Um, it refers to awakening that when the Buddha said to the five monks, I am a Buddha now, um, he meant he had um, abandoned all um, ignorance. So he used this term Buddha, meaning I have awakened now. And this term Buddha also mean I have um, also mean knowing or realizing um, the nature of phenomena. So in Tibetan, Mm, we couldn't, we don't have one word that means both. I think in English too, you don't have a word that means awakening and knowing, you know. <laughs> Actually, enlight enlightened, this may be kind of similar meaning in English. Anyway, so the Tibetans, what they did is that they joined two words together, Sangwa and Gepa, together Sangye, to show the meaning of this, what Buddha means. Now, Buddhas are of many kind. Just the term. When we're talking about the term Buddha, it can mean many things. Mm. So, uh, for, um, for example, in, in Buddhist terms, <clears throat> mm, an arhat can be called a Buddha too, or a Prateka Buddha. Obviously, we call them Buddha, Prateka Buddha. You know. Um, because they also woke up from ignorance and they also know the reality of phenomena. So, so then here we have perfect and complete Buddha. So to show the difference that, yeah, that Shakyamuni, or the likes of Shakyamuni, are um, complete in their abandonment, and realization, you know, so um, that. <clears throat> Then we have Rikpa Dan Jabzudemba. The next. Meaning. Um, possessing the seeing and the feet, so to speak. 
seeing and the feet. Fuß, yeah. <laughs> um, because this idea is kind of very simple idea. Just as um, to go somewhere, you have to see, and you and you have to be able to walk. Sort of, you have to have uh, some limbs. So. Um, um, without these two, no one can go anywhere. And even with one, mm, it's very difficult, not possible. No, I mean, like, for example, if you only can see, but no, f you, you have no feet or nothing, so, so you cannot walk. You cannot go where you want to go. Kind, kind of same. If you cannot see, but you have two feet, two feet, you cannot still go where you want to go. You know? So this type of the idea is that this is a perilous journey that is going to take a long time. And. Um, you will mainly depend on yourself. So now, seeing and being able to go becomes very important. <laughs> so this, the commentators, especially Mipa, um, yeah, example of Mipam Rinpoche, he says, first of all, he's, he wrote at the end that he wrote, he wrote this commentary in two days. <laughs> two days, you know. It's a very special master, Mipam Rinpoche. Uh, I think mm, properly he only studied for like Sort of, he only received, I heard, the ninth chapter of Bodhisattva Charavta for 10 days or something like that. And, and one day he said, I want to do retreat, you know, when he was young. So he said, I'm going to read all the Tenjur. Tenjur is um, the translation of all the commentaries of India. So I heard it's, there's like around 200 volumes. And he went into the retreat. And he came out in 21 days, 25 days. And he said, I finished. Later, when, <coughs> when uh, he gave oral transmission, around 200 volumes, and he's not looking on it at a text. He just recites everything by memory. And he had five scribes, you know, people who write, uh, because he make a lot of corrections. He said, oh, here's one mistake, spelling mistake, or something, you know. That's Mipham um, Rinpoche. Mm. truly worthy of the name uh, as an emanation of Manjushri, emanation of Manjushri. Uh, so he says, Rikpada Shapsudemba is um, Rikpa is the prajn uh, Rikpa is the wisdom. He says. Um, <clears throat> from the um, three trainings, um, 
a practitioner of Buddha Dhamma has only three trainings. You have discipline, you have meditation, and you have wisdom. So he says, Rigpa is the wisdom. And then whatever the Rigpa sees, the, the, the feet, shop, you know, here, has to now go there, follow. That is the discipline and meditation. So he says, oh, one can understand this like this, in this way. Or we have an um, mm, Eightfold Noble Path. And there, the Rigpa is the view, the perfect view. And the rest, seven, is the feet sort of mm, perfect livelihood and all that. You know. <clears throat> All each of these words, for example, now here what it shows is that Buddha is someone who does everything perfectly. Like in the Manjushri Namasangiti, Manjushri Namas, it's, it's, it's uh, chanting the names of Manjushri. Yeah? One of the quality is, yeah, one of the quality is um, uh, mm, that the Buddha knows when is the time to teach to whom. And Buddha always teach on time. So, as you see, Rikpa Dhan um, having the vi wisdom and the means, unmistakably. Then we have Devarshakpa, the next Sugata. So, um, as it suggests, someone mm, who went to sort of a better place, <laughs> a better place, uh, they were a shekpa. Um, <clears throat> meaning, when you, when you practice samatha and vipassana, Oh, by the way, this, um, the previous one, seeing and the feet, also it is explained that the seeing is the vipassana, and the feet is the samatha. Yeah. So when one has these two, then one is called a sugata. Because all the all um, all the other types of practitioner who do not have these two uh, wisdom and means, or who have only one of those, or who have mistaken who have uh, mistaken versions of those. can never be called a sugata. Because sugata is someone who has reached their final sort of destination that is without any uh, suffering. Um, so only, only uh, someone like Shakyamuni is the Sugata. 
And not only that, as Shanti Deva says in ways of Bodhisattva, um, Mm. that the bodhicitta is like a, mm, like a, such a joyful path that it's not that when you practice bodhicitta then afterwards you get the result that while you practice bodhicitta you get the the joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Sugata is also someone who joyfully went to Nirvana. You know, um, <clears throat> um, I think there is also explanation that. The path of Shakyamuni is beyond extreme. Because some teachers teach something like, oh, you do whatever you want to do. Eat, drink, you know, do whatever you want. That's good, you know. That's, they're always sort of trying to hmm, please the listener and, try to keep them. Or there are others who say, no, you cannot do anything. You have to be naked, you know, and you should, you should sleep on a bed of th thorns. You know. And you, you, you beat yourself with a whip. And, you know, and like that. If they say only when you punish the body, then you will have no desire. Then later you'll become enlightened. Some, because they are so afraid of desire. You know. Both extreme. Shakyamuni teach a middle path. Yeah, so like this, I mean, these are never ending in meaning. Then we have Jigden Kenpa. Yeah, knower of the world. Knower of the world. This is extremely... Uh, sort of effective um, quality of an enlightened being. Knower of the world. Um, meaning, Buddha is not going to teach everybody. Only to those who is ready? That's a big problem in, for us. All of us have a lot of things to say. First of all, nobody cares. You know? And even if, <laughs> even if we get a stage where we can say something, we say wrong things to wrong people. so difficult. Uh, OK, let's talk about Dharma, Dharma teaching, you know. As a Dharma, Dharma speaker, it's so difficult. Because your job is not to, not to, you know, it's, it's not like a mathematic teaching, you know. But that teaching, I mean, of, still you can do really badly, of course, but at the end of the day, that's the answer or whatever solution, that's it, you know. Um, but um, teachings, there's so many different people. Sometimes 
in one audience, there's new, completely beginner, and then sort of really good practitioners, and then some people who just wants to, you know, uh, sort of get rid of their anxiety and some people are writing their papers, you know, like that. You know. So now you have to say something that <laughs> makes sense to, you know. And it's so difficult. Sometimes you have to choose, okay, I'm going to only talk to the practitioner. The others can just watch or go whatever they want, you know. Or, which is also sad. This is, you know, like that. Or you can say something that's for everyone. That's also very sad, because then what you say will, could get really diluted. You know, so like that. But Buddha is not like that. Jiktin mm. Kenpa, Buddha knows everything. And the wisdom of the Buddha is so fast that. Mm. Mm. that it is said even simple things that Buddha do um, the Bodhisattva of the tenth Bhumi cannot comprehend this is interesting in some sutra they say when Buddha walk, the tenth Bhumi Bodhisattvas cannot understand how did Buddha put his right feet in front of the left? I don't know what that means. <laughs> but, you know, Jikten uh, Kenpa, you know, someone who really knows their audience. This is um, extremely important. Kevuduve mm. Kalojurva is someone who is the charioteer uh, in taming the beings. Buddha. That is the Buddha. Again, there, there are hundreds, thousands of um, beings. Um, um, teachers, teachers, expounders who seek to tame their listener. But um, they are not now not to look down on other teachers. But when you talk about the sun, you have to admit that it's stronger than torchlight. Similarly, when you talk about the Buddha, it's naturally uh, sort of subdues all the rest expounder. Not because Buddha had some very high political affiliation or anything. It was just a monk sitting under a tree. But because of his wisdom, the qualities inside, you know, his, her, whatever. 
um, Kebuddulwe Kalodruwa, meaning Buddha, really, there is no other being like a completely enlightened Buddha. who can tame beings like him. So, um, then there he, there all the commented, commentaries advises us to think about how Buddha tamed somebody with strong desire. How would that tame somebody with strong anger? How, how would that tame somebody with strong ignorance? These are kind of important, important to know. Um, to know the life story of the Buddha. And it's kind of sad that uh, many of us are not so familiar with it. In a, <laughs> in a way, because um, Buddha is, I think, mainly because Buddha is some, many times presented as a, not really a person, you know, but more like a deity or something, you know. I, I think people, for example, Tibetans know Milarepa's story better than Buddha's story, for example. <laughs> because Milarepa's story, there is suffering, there is crying, there is, you know. And it's entertaining. <laughs> Buddha story, you know. <laughs> uh, this is how the, the Mahayana masters depicted, you know. And um, for them, it was perfect. Because conceptualization is the problem. This is the problem, right? So then they show Buddha without any concept, you know. But for ordinary people, we don't know what to do with it, you know. So um, it's good to read the Buddha bi sort of biographies of how the Saravaka or Theravada talk about. Maybe, you know, we can relate a bit more. Or Master Thich Han wrote this. I cannot say that everything in there is exactly correct. He's He's an author, or he's a, like a poet, you know. But I think it can, it can create a Buddha that's sometimes sort of hungry, you know. And, uh, <laughs> sometimes goes to beg for food. You know, that that if you were born in Vesali in those days, one of the big cities, it's possible that you making your lunch and then you hear tsk, 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 outside your door, you know, as monks have a monk stick, you know, with the stick of some bells. And you go out and then Buddha is there, say, oh, Please give me food, you know. Like this type of actually very important. Not just always Buddha with the light going in and out and you know. <laughs> like, 
That's also good. But this is also good. Mm, so anyway, uh, in Buddha's biographies, first of all, the Mahayana biography is beautiful how it appeared, sort of completely. Uh, there was a great uh, um, um, practitioner of Shankar, Shiva. I guess these days you have to say Hindu master. <coughs> he debated with a Buddhist master because he, he really thought, okay, Buddhism is wrong. And he went in many monasteries and, and defeated them and destroyed the monastery. So in those days, when you debate, you invite the king of the land. I mean, if you're a big master, you know, <laughs> not everybody can. <laughs> and whoever loses has to leave everything and follow the winner. So he defeated and convert a lot of Buddhists. Then finally, he went to Nalanda. There, um, he debated with Aryadeva. And he lost. And he lost in everything. He lost in debate. He lost in sort of miracles and all that. And Arya Deva forcibly make him a monk because he lost now. And lock him up in a temple. But he's a great scholar. He was so great when he meditate, he could see the Shiva in for example, you have a uh, vase, you know, vase. Vase, when you polish it and it's shiny, he could see the Shiva in the vase and talk to him. He was a really great meditator. So he's locked in the temple. So he started reading the texts, you know, all the Buddhist texts. And in one sutra, he saw his name. Where Buddha said, in future, someone named Ash, uh, um, Ashwa Gosha will come. He will write my sort of complete uh, biography. So, so he knows that's him. So he became one of the greatest Buddhist masters. <laughs> So if you want, you should, you should, you can read the translation of his work. Um, I, I heard that it's a British aristocrat, you know, but he was very, he learned Sanskrit and so on. It's translated in the, I think, 19th century. So, and it's very nice. It's called Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra. Anyway, so uh, there, for example, um, for example, Buddha's younger brother, the Prince Nanda, he had such a beautiful wife. So day and night he has to be with his wife sort of extreme attachment. So much that one day Buddha came, so his, the servants announced, you know, your brother, the Tathagata, is here. So 
So he thought, oh, I should go with he, and I have to go to see him at least. You know? So the wife said, no, don't go. Be with me in the bed. <laughs> so he said, no, I must go. So she spit on his hand and said, before this dry, you should come back. <laughs> So he said, OK, I, I promise. And he went. And but he saw the Buddha. He said, how are you, or whatever, you know, welcome. And Buddha didn't say one thing. And Buddha left. So he thought, oh, did he want me to follow him? What is, you know? So he followed his, his brother. You know. And Buddha went, 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 he followed, followed. Buddha went into the, into the vihara, the sort of monastery. You know. So he also went. There, Buddha told one of the older monks, make him a monk. <laughs> you understand? So his, his older brother's order, you so. So he became monk. <laughs> but now he's missing his wife all the time. His clothes is, is a monk, but his mind is always, oh, what is she doing? It's now morning time, oh, it's, you know? <clears throat> and then Buddha, like that, uh, as uh, I'm sure you have heard this story, Buddha takes him to the heavenly realm where Buddha shows um, um, sort of all kind of beautiful women, sort of goddess, not not a woman like goddess, goddesses and gods like. And before um, going to heaven, Buddha asked him, uh, "Who do who do you know? Who do you think is more prettier than your wife?" He says, "Nobody." Nobody says. All the rest is like a monkey <laughs> compared to my wife. You see. And then now he sees the goddesses. Buddha says, now who is more pretty? He says, so oh, compared to these, my wife is like a monkey. <laughs> it's not a good story. <laughs> not for modern years. <clears throat> so. So Buddha shows him a new sort of palace. <clears throat> it's empty. So he asks, who, who lives, what god lives in this palace? You know? So there were many sort of goddesses and gods who were servant. You know. They say, oh, we are waiting for Nanda. He is a monk now, so he accumulated a lot of merit. And he come here. And then we offer ourselves to him. <laughs> he got very excited. <laughs> he, he said, I'll be, I'll be a good monk now. <laughs> I don't need my wife. <laughs> they come back to Earth. Buddha and Nanda come back to earth. Buddha told all the monks, monks, no one is allowed to talk to Nanda. You are monk for enlightenment. He is a monk for desire. Your view is different. Motivation is different. You know? So he, nobody is allowed to communicate with him. Like that. <laughs> so, in these many ways, Buddha tames his brother, and he becomes an arhat. Or the way Buddha tames Angulimala. 
It's a wonderful, wonderful story. Account tragic how somebody um, can, how someone can be um, that much used and pushed, you know, into doing horrible things. He killed 999 human beings because his teachers said, bring me the finger of 1,000 people. Then I, you know, we do fire puja, whatever, then you become liberation, liberated. And he was about to, now he was living in the forest is a rubber sort of but he didn't he, he didn't take any wealth and his body all smell of 999 finger mala <laughs> rotting away and um, the king announced that we are going to kill him now But every time the king sent four army, all four dead. Eight army, all eight dead. Finally, the king says, I go with my whole army. <laughs> so his mother was still alive, and she really started worrying. So she thought, if I meet him, I can talk to him, you know. As his mother was going to see him, he was waiting for one more person to kill. So obviously he would have killed her. Buddha saw that if he kills his mother, he cannot gain liberation in this life. So before he saw his mother, Buddha appeared in front of him. <laughs> so he's very happy now. I can finally, 1,000 is done now. So, so he ran after Buddha. He should read the sutra, Angulimala Sutra, very simple. Different version, uh, but uh, kind of uh, same, you know, and um, he meets, I mean, he chased the Buddha. Buddha would walk very slowly and he would run, run, but he cannot catch him, you know. So then finally he says, wait, monk, wait. And Buddha is waiting. And he sees this man has no fear. You know, what would you do? You, see, you, you know there is a famous murderer <laughs> and you meet the murderer with all the fingers, you know, it's a horror story. But there was not even a hint of fear. So then he started asking, why didn't you stop when I asked you to stop? No, why didn't you stop when I asked you to stop? Yeah. Then Buddha says, I have stopped from a long time. You have not stopped yet. So that completely opens something in his mind. Then he says, what do you mean? Like this, Buddha gives him teaching right there. Who can do that? in this world, you know, someone completely crazy who have killed 999 people and you, the only way you tame them is by speaking. 
So he let, he throws his mala, he throws his uh, you know weapon, and he says, "Please accept me as your student." He become a monk, best monk, really best of the monks. Um, uh, he's he's kind of like the Indian Milarepa, you know. And then when the king comes, because the king couldn't find him anywhere in the forest, you know. so he so he thinks, oh, maybe he went to the direction of Buddha's monastery. There, he sees a monk who is teaching other Wang monks. It's very sort of peaceful and radiant, and he listened a little bit. And he thought, wow, what a wonderful teaching. So he goes in to meet Buddha in his Buddha's hut, and he says, Angulimala is nearby. Please be careful. And Buddha says, tells one of the monks, call, he's, he has a new name now, he became a monk. So he's called that monk here. And the, the king sees the new monk. Thinks, oh, that's the monk I saw outside. And Buddha says, this is Angulimala. And the king almost peed. <laughs> it, say, it is said that he was uh, why, shaking. In another occasion, when Buddha is teaching, and Angulimala did this <coughs> like this. <laughs> but the voice was so frightening. The king <laughs> gets so scared. And Angulimala became f uh, completely free from his negative karma. And as a sign, one day Buddha and him, they're walking, and they see that under a tree, um, a mother and a daughter is there, and the daughter is giving birth. She's pregnant. You know. So they cannot go to anywhere now. And usually what happens is that when, uh, when the uh, really good monks and nuns, they bless the people there, especially someone who is going through pregnancy, suffering, it helps them, you know. So Buddha says, you go and bless them. Says, how can I, a murderer, bless bless someone else? Finally, you know, after he goes and bless the bless the woman, that, saying, through my practice of the Vinaya, Abhidharma, and Sutra, you know, may your suffering be gone. Immediately, she became free from all pains. So everybody understood now that he really became a good practitioner. Like that. But he still gets m murdered by people. One day, he made a mistake of going to beg for food in a, in a, in a part of the city where he had killed many people from. So the whole family and they, the tribes, tribesmen, they saw him coming and they, throws, they killed him by throwing stones at him. Extreme anger. Just by talking, Buddha tames that person. Anyway, so many accounts like this. And not just by speaking. Just seeing the face of the Buddha, people gain meditation. Um, or in the sutras, 
in the Vimalakirti Sutras, um, it mentions a world where Buddha doesn't even speak. I mean, Buddha teach Dharma, but not by speaking. You know, Buddha teaches with smell. <laughs> and how it works is that due to the blessing of the Buddha, wonderful trees grow. And the people, practitioner, go and sit under this tree and smell. You know, and this smell triggers meditation. And meditation gives them wisdom. <laughs> like that. You know, so many. So, rightfully, Kevuduve Kalojova, someone who is really, you know, you, you never know how Buddha can liberate beings. I should go further now quickly. <clears throat> Lama Mepa, someone who is supreme, let the me temper, let the me temper, someone who is the, yeah, because. Most of the time, um, expounders are teachers of human. And they claim to be gods or messengers of gods. Hardly ever you hear about an expounder that came on this earth who says, I am also the teacher of the gods. <laughs> So, when Buddha became enlightened, first came uh, people like Sakra, who is, is the king of a god, king of the god realm. I mean, one of the god realm. I mean. And then slowly, slowly came Brahma and everybody. Please turn the wheel of Dharma. So, mm, mm, not only that, when, whenever Buddha would teach, of course, all kinds of beings would be present. But, but his teachings were most suitable for humans and gods. You know, so that's why Tata Minam Gitamba, meaning the teacher of gods and humans. <clears throat> so, Buddha, as we already said, what Buddha means, then Bhagavat or Bhagavan. Um, this term Bhagavan or Bhagavat has, I'm, I'm sure, has many meanings. Um, but mainly it, it meant someone who is with the qualities um, or someone who has um, the, yeah, the, someone who has the qualities of, um, I don't know, um, sort of, um, gods or or liberation and someone who has destroyed all the obscuration within so bhaga one this two term now um when the Tibetan translators were translating this term. 
Bhagavad, they, they, they thought, well, you know, in India there are others who are also called Bhagavan or Bhagavad. I mean, even books like Bhagavad Gita, you know, same Bhagavad, same, or Bhagavan. Um, so they wanted to show that Buddha is beyond those Bhagavan. <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody who knows Tibetan, but in the Tibetan, then we, we have chomden de, meaning the chomden is the translation for Bhagavad, but depa meaning uh, transcendent Bhagavan, sort of. <laughs> so anyway, so, th so this is what Buddha is. And uh, um, I think Maitreya talks about the six qualities of Bhagavan Buddha, Bhagavad Buddha. Um, so such a tatagata, sonam taki jutimpa, Meaning, Sonam Taki Jutumba, meaning mm, he um, he is the result, not he, but whatever that is, the Buddha is the result of of perfect merit of countless of lives. So the cause, which is the perfect merit and all that beneficial to beings, that is, which is beneficial to sentient beings, it matches the result, meaning the result is also like the cause, very beneficial to beings and so on. Um, why does Buddha benefit being? Because, because Buddha has no ideas like we have, like I will do this, I will go here. But then Buddha did do this and go there. So why does Buddha do it? Because of the aspiration of many, many, many lives of as a bodhisattva. And may I be beneficial for beings. You know, may I do this, may I, where there is no medicine, may I become medicine like that. So now when mm, but the, now this is the result completely enlightened being still appears as uh, as a fun f functioning you know like mundane functions <clears throat> then Um, give it so on and chew me so the next. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning, um, Buddha is a kind of result. that mm, makes sure that the cause merit um, 
does not go to wane or does not does not end for example when 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 ordinary people like myself do something and I get a result let's say I am like good result um, born as a celestial being but that that result eats away the cause yeah so um you know um as with any ordinary thing when the green sh shoot comes out of the seed it destroys the seed but buddha is not like that <laughs> buddha comes out of the result without destroying the result <laughs> Yes. Um, that gives it so I'm sure so. And another way of explaining this is that when you make um, offering to the Buddha, um, the result um, sort of. Um, mm, is sure to come. You know, I mean, the result is definitely positive, but if it comes. Um, especially when you make, a, when you make offering or when you sing about the Buddha or whatever, when you look at um, for Buddhahood, then the merit will never finish. Give it some nam chumizawa. Sonam ji ternam ji ji. The next. Yeah. Sonam ji ternam ji ji, meaning Buddha is the treasury of merit for others. Um, even physical offering, you know, you making offering to hundreds of monks and nuns and then making, making small offering to Buddha. That's more merit. Even uh, Buddha says, whoever makes offering to, to the Buddha accumulates immense merit. Even when the Buddha is no more, when someone makes offering to the relics of the Buddha, a great merit. Even when there is no relic, when someone makes offering to the Buddha in their mind, like this type of Buddha, you know, he says the same merit as make, making offering to me in person. So then this um, um, for example, hmm, just offering a handful of sand to the Buddha, there were some boys playing and Buddha came. So they, they saw their parents giving food in the Buddha's bowl. So they they said, Buddha, I have offering for you. So he 
he did this and they put sand in his begging bowl. And then Buddha said he will be born as Ashoka. And historically, almost nobody managed to do what Ashoka did in terms of Buddha Dharma. You know, um, just a merit of offering sand. Or, or um, when Sakya Pandita was forced to come to um, Mongolia, to China, because the grandson of Genghis Khan, he he was a he was a great emperor, of course. Yeah, and ruthless. Like when they kill the enemy, they kill everybody, not just the man, but women, the children, and everybody. Very ruthless. So he's told Sakya Pandit, I want you to come here to become my teacher. Sakya Pandit said, I'm very old, I'm 61 years old. And it's far away, I cannot come. He said, if you don't come, I will come with my entire army. On the way, I will destroy everything. So, do you want me to do this? So he said, Sakya Pandit said, okay, I will come. When he went there, he found that the, that, that the, the, the prince had a skin problem. And um, with his meditation, Sakya Pandit saw there, that there are really strong Nagas who was harming the prince. So then Sakya Pandita talks with them. Why do you do that? So they say, well, this prince, emperor, whatever, you know, um, he, he, he had made a Buddha statue made of go um, um, wait. Um, no, he has made offering to Buddha once. And because of that merit, he was born as a great king in all lives. <laughs> and for some karmic reason, he always came to where we are living and destroy our place. Before, we used to live in, in Mongol plains. And then there he was born as another king. And he would run on our plains and play and kill animals like that. So then <coughs> I call upon all the Nagas and said, please help me destroy this man. They said, we cannot do anything because he made offering to Shakyamuni. Wait until he makes a big mistake once. So then when he was born as Chengiz Khan's grandson, Somebody offered him a Buddha statue made of gold. So, so he, he thought, is this really completely gold? So he break it a little bit, he make a hole, and to see it's gold really good. <laughs> no. So then his merit broke. You know, so small things like that. He just made offerings once to Buddha. So 
Buddha is with Supi Jemba, is Buddha is with uh, patience. Tolerant. Never, people came to fight with him. Never Buddha showed like, uh, even we, we, we say, there wasn't even a line on his face like this or anything, you know. Um, or frightening things would happen. Never Buddha would say one thing or show, and there would be no sign of fear or irritation. Once some people killed a very famous uh, courtesan, basically prostitute. It's a prostitute, you know. So they throw the dead body behind Buddha's cottage. And they announce, spread a rumor that Shakyamuni called a courtesan in the night time and didn't pay her. And when she started calling other people, he killed him. Didn't say one thing. No, no fear. When people ask him, monk said, please say something. He said, the truth will appear by itself. And it did. And, <clears throat> um, yeah. Supi Jemba. Supi Jemba also means he was magnificent to look at. Uh, one of the result of patience or tolerance is that you basically you become good looking. <laughs> you know, you become magnificent like Buddha. Sonamji Ternamji Shi. What did me come from which? Here, he says mm, that the form of the Buddha, just the physical form of the Buddha, is um, arising from mm, unimaginable merit. Um, This is very long. I don't know if I should even read all this. Mm, from the sutra of throwing, throwing the stone. <laughs> Einstein, yeah. Um, he said, if you collect all the merit of all the being only on this earth, it will not be even equal to one hundredth of the merit of a Chakravartin king. Like that. And Chakravartin... Chakravartin... <laughs> A Chakravartin king who rules all the four sort of um, planets. 
Arts, you know, when you do mandala offering, yeah, so we have four planets. Or, I don't know, maybe it's continents, maybe. Um, countless of them, they're married together. Cannot even be equal to the merit of Mm, the f the f the four um, kings of um, celestial gods. <laughs> like that, he goes on and on and on. Until he talks, it, he, he comes to the bodhisattvas. And he says, Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva like Maitreya, who only has to be born just one more time to become Buddha, as many as grain of sand in the, in the banks of river Ganga, all of them married together cannot, cannot be equal to even one thousandth of Buddha's merit. So, <laughs> or he says, if all the merit of all sentient beings is multiplied into ten, it will be equal, I mean, it can produce one hair of the Buddha. You know, and you can take it poetically. You can take it literally, according to one's own mindset. So, Sonamji Ternamji Ji, the body of the Buddha, with with everything that he has. It's, it's really the mind of uh, merit. Sort of. Yeah. Uh, then, Peje Sambunam Jitreba. And then the next one, Sandam Jimeto Jeba. Meaning, he is with the minor, uh, perfect minor signs, and he is with, with the uh, um, f sort of. Um, he is ornamented with the uh, major signs. <laughs> major signs. Yeah, uh, it's okay. The thing is that. Mm. Major signs is like Buddha's sort of. So, okay, he has chakras here. 1,000, uh, you know, lined spoke chakras on his hands, I mean, on his palms and his feet. And, mm, mm. You know, for example, yeah, they say his eyes are so beautiful, like a cow's eyes. <laughs> you know, and like that. These are the major signs. That, for example, it says that on the Buddha body of the Buddha, you will never see this type of things where you see like the bumps of the bones. Oh, you don't see the wings also. Maybe, maybe that's what Japanese thought. Oh, Buddha, there shouldn't be no, no winds visible, so they make, you know, really fat Buddha statue. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, 
but um, like that. For example, Buddha has web, strong web between his and Buddha's tongue can cover his face, you know, like that, like, like cover his face or mm, Buddha's uh, has a white hair. Yeah. When you pull, it will go until the end of this earth. And, and but when you let go, it's a small around here. Main major signs are his Ushinisha and his chakras, like that. And the minor signs are more like the qualities of these major signs. For example, um, the color of Buddha's fingernail. Uh, like that. Anyway, when Buddha stands, his finger reaches his knee. Anyway, to remember Tumba. Chuyurimbertumba, meaning, um, yeah, like we talked before, Buddha really mm, teaches, appears according to the need of the time. You know, um, Buddha really mm, there's never the fault of being too late or too early. One can say it's because Buddha is beyond time. Late or not late is some, if for someone who is bound by time. Buddha, who has seen that time is an illusion, Um, is really then his activity is on time as needed. Um, for example, f for us, he only lived for 82 years. But one day in, in the White Lotus Sutra, Buddha hit his hand on the ground and the ground break. Out comes billions of great bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas who are about to become Buddha, like Maitreya. Great, so this is 10th Bhumi now. Not just 10th Bhumi, at the end of 10th Bhumi. So Matri is looking at them with surprise. Because Bodhisattva can read the mind of others who are lower than them, but not equal or above. <clears throat> so he asked Buddha, who are these great bodhisattvas who are just like me? Buddha said, oh, they're all my students. Maitri is, how? I'd never meet them. Buddha said, well, they, I have trained them for three countless eons. From the Beginning, I became enlightened under the Bodhi tree. Till now. Three countless eons. 
For so for us human beings, maybe he was, he ran away, what, when he was 29? We, we are bound by time. We have to calculate. Then he spent six years meditating. He became Buddha when he was 35. And he died when he was 82, 81. So maybe he was maybe like 60, 70 years old when he was teaching the White Lotus Sutra, you understand? <laughs> so from the age of 35 to maybe 60, even 80, let's say, that's like only 40, 50 years. That's not three countless eons. But so for us, in the Vimalakirti Sutra, um, it says, for those who need everything fast, you know, Buddha shows countless of aeons as a day or a, or a year. You know. And for those who need everything slowly, Buddha shows a day as a countless eon. Why did I say this? <laughs> Chuyu Rinpoche, you know, there. Chuyu Rinpoche, that Buddha really, everything Buddha does is really according to the. It's not that Buddha is doing. There's never a, a thing that Buddha did because he really believed it. They all. It's very important for for the Buddha. Everything was really, really, it was just a mirror, mirror of the merit of the looker, whoever is looking. Next. Vielleicht, pause, right? Someone has to go to the bathroom. Okay, ten minute, ten minute pee pee pause. Oh. So, <clears throat> the next tone of mutumba mepa meaning um, he doesn't create any discomfort when seen. When he's seen. You know, very, I mean, even the appearance is very harmless. In, um, uh, one, one reason why some men like have, have longer hair and beard and stuff to look, look sort of, sorry, you know, a little bit dangerous, you know. <laughs> but uh, Buddha, no hair. No beard, nothing. So looks very harmless, you know. And he's wearing like a skirt, you know. Even more sort of harmless. You know. No weapon, no anger, always calm. So he doesn't create any discomfort when seen. Um, not just, yeah, when seen, that maybe that's enough for now. Um, they be maybe on the long number go. Meaning, he doesn't deceive anybody. Mm. Mm. You know, um, there are many who deceive, especially those who have devotion to, to them. Devotion to them, they deceive them. Of course, you cannot 
deceive others. <laughs> Even when you don't deceive knowingly, because of your limitation, let's say I'm some sort of mountain god or something. I mean, not me, but anybody, you know? And nomad people come, and when they make offering to me, I make sure no problem while they're on the mountain. Looks good, but I'm limited. If you go down from my mountain, my area, I cannot help you. Buddha doesn't have such limitations. So meaning, um, he really gives joy to those who have full devotion to him. Because he has no such fault or limitation. Sheriff Zilj Minamba. Not everybody comes to the Buddha seeking teaching. During the time of Buddha, many people, logicians and so on, came to debate, you know, or came to sort of, um, as in the case these days, you know, you, if you can go befriend a famous person, you become famous like that, you know. Um, anyway, so they will try to argue with Buddha, so on, and never could they go beyond his, just his intellect, you know, the way he will, never with proper reasoning. <clears throat> Meaning his, his wisdom cannot be overpowered or subdued by anyone, anything. The next. <laughs> yeah. As is easy to understand, Buddha's physical, verbal, and mental strength cannot be subdued. Mm. Or you can understand it, I mean, in, in, in the commentaries it says, Tobna Lezuamiba, meaning his physical strength is, um, cannot be, it, it's um, um, sort of undefeatable. So, um, Buddha has many strengths. One of the strength is his physical strength that he got from his parents. And um, that, for example, when he was a young prince, uh, when, they, um, when he would shoot an arrow, it, it crosses seven trees, goes into a stone, and water comes out. You know, or in Tibet there was a. <laughs> I don't know. I I always say tell stories and there's never time for real teaching. You know. <laughs> there was a Lamde master. Lamde, it's Sakchapa. Sakchapa, but he was he was he was wild. I haven't heard any other teacher like this. Okay. He, he was a young man, nothing to do. He was so strong that uh, 25 men, put, he, you know, they put five rope on his body, and 25 men, five men on each rope pull him. They cannot. And when he go round, they all fall down. You know, very strong, wild man. 
shameless also. He slept with his sister and she became pregnant. That was the limit of his shame. Then he said, oh, this is embarrassing now. <laughs> so he ran away. As a young boy, you know, like 20 years old, he ran away. Nothing to do. Um, he's, he's, you know, because he eats half a bag of tsampa in one sitting and half a body of a goat, you know. So the only job he could do to feed him was a bodyguard of merchants, you know. Bodyguards of uh, traveler, business people. He go with them. <laughs> he, he did that once um, when there were robbers. He shot arrow. He passed through three men went into a stone. <laughs> and later he meets great Dogmi and become, he became liberated through yoga of, you know, his body. Anyway, it's a useless story right now. <laughs> um, interesting. Anyway. So his physical strength is, never subdued so in the in the sutras they they talk about um when buddha would lift a huge stone with his toe you know <laughs> with his toe because he was invited by a a, a clan or a tribe men tribe where everybody was very strong sort of that's what the men do you know they're known to be big and strong so on the way the men there was a huge stone sort of boulder boulder so the men thought if if we remove it then buddha can pass so it will be offering to Buddha. Also, we will become famous because it's a huge stone. So they bring elephant and horses to pull the stone. Nothing. So when tomorrow Buddha is coming, they got so embarrassed. So, so he picked it up with his toe. You know. <laughs> like to crush their uh, pride of body, you know, strong. Anyway, <laughs> that he is the teacher of all sentient beings. Um, in um, in some tantras, they teach that Buddha, that there is a. Um, emanation of Buddha in all the six realms. Or in some sutras, they teach that um, there are, um, just in this world alone, there are 1,000 Shaktamunis teaching simultaneously. So, Samjitamjajitempa, he's teacher of all sentient beings. <laughs> Buddha, just as the father, um, yeah, just as the father creates the child. Usually, the example is like this: uh, Prajna Paramita is the mother. So Buddha is his kind of father. <laughs> so the children is the Bodhisattva. So, um, but there are many reasons why it is called like this. Because in India, the children carry the family name 
Similarly, the Bodhisattva carries the name of the Buddha. The children make sure that the work of the father continue in sort of the ancient caste system, you know, just like that. Maybe Germany was like this. You have you have all your Naknama is Arbeit name. No, most of the Schumacher. <laughs> or a, or a was um about uh, lustig I don't know what <laughs> why <laughs> the first person was very happy. I don't know, yeah, Becca. Maybe it was like a little bit like that, but anyway. Um, so the children continue similarly. The Buddha's work is a uh, benefit of beings. Bodhisattva continues that. And the children also bring offspring. Similarly, the Bodhisattvas, later they give Bodhisattva vow to future Bodhisattvas. So like these type of different reason, Buddha is called like a father. And all of us are like Buddha's children. Well, here mainly is talking about um, Bodhisattva on Bhumi or the Sangha. Pape Kansanam Jijabo, and he is the king of all the noble beings. Noble beings here mainly refers to the Stravakas, the Arhat and Prateka Buddhas. Because the Bodhisattva, he singled out Bodhisattva, you know. As he said, he is the father of the Bodhisattva. So now when he says he's the king of all the noble beings, because when you live in a land in those days, when you listen to what the king says, if the rule of the land is you can do this, you cannot do that, and you do exactly that, nobody disturb you. You know, you, you, you get happiness, sort of. Yeah, similarly, similarly when monks and nuns, when stravakas or upasikas, you know, they they come to Buddha Dharma and Buddha says, don't do any negative karma, you know. Accumulate positive karma, tame your mind. So they, they, they do it exactly like Buddha says, as if he's the king, you know, so like that. Also, um, uh, in a way that Mm, when you follow a king, you don't become a king. Similarly, the Sravakas follow Buddha, but they don't become Buddha. Um, that he is the captain of, uh, for those who wants to go to the um, city of liberation. Yeah. His wisdom is immeasurable. His confidence is unimaginable. M meaning... Mm, mm, Because there is no no fear. There's no no um, deceiving. Especially Buddha has nothing to hide. Someone who has nothing to hide is free from fear and confident. Everybody has something to hide. Kind of, except Buddha. 
Yeah, except Buddha. So, and um, yeah, so when Buddha teaches and so on, everything is for the benefit, reasonable, so on. So, Sung number Dagba. Sung number. Yes, whatever the Buddha says. This is, these are really unimaginable. Each of them, I'm really not explaining much, and I don't know too, but you think about what does that mean, Sung Nambar Dagba? Meaning, um, a perfect speech. Whatever Buddha say, it is from compassion and from wisdom, and it's necessary. It's just unimaginable to imagine. <laughs> to someone, someone who, who doesn't speak one word unnecessarily, um, and everything is perfect like this. When you when we look at our, ourselves, everything we say is. Of course, when we are angry, it's from anger, or desire, or ignorance, or pride, or very. You know, when you really analyze whatever you are saying, that's a. Even when you think, okay, there's no pride, there's no desire, I mean, anger, there's no desire, but still mm, there is this wish to mm, sort of wish to show others that I, I exist. I, I, you know, you understand? <laughs> I'm, I'm also here. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, anyway. Um, so, sung number tab. Yang nimba. Very sweet to hear. But that's voice. Kujie tawe chome sheba. There you go. <laughs> Everybody else. After a while, you get bored of their face. Who watches TV series? I, I watch sometimes. And in the first sort of staffer, staffer, as the staffer, there's the main hero or the heroine is so beautiful. After the second third, I get bored of looking at their face. You know? Say too much, you know. But never like that with Buddha. Always sort of. And from wherever you look, not just his face front, you know, but from behind and everything, everything. Um, that's what it's supposed to mean when you circumambulate. Kinsen Mujis says, Tsongsa Kinsen, he says, we circumambulate originally he says, it came because you want to, it's so beautiful. You want to look from all direction. So you look from here, look from here, look from here, you know, <laughs> like that. Mm. There is no one else <laughs> like the Buddha. <laughs> yeah, naturally. Magyoba. Um, in this world, our world is divided um, not by race, not by color or anything, but mental capacity. So we live in desire realm. So there are three realms, desire realm, Form realm, formless. Desire realm, 
is where people um, they they are mainly occupied by desire. I mean, look at ourselves. Of course, we get angry, but in a day, we desire more. Oh, maybe I today I can do this. I hope so, you know. Or, or I want to eat this. I want to meet this friend. Like all more desire oriented. And anyway, in sh if I make it short, it's a bit vulgar, but and but the truth is. Those who need to, uh, to have uh, s uh, sexual joy, desire them. There is hell, hungry ghost, animal, human, uh, uh, um, asura, and then god realm. Six god realm. Six god realms. From the six above is the realm of uh, Brahma. I mean, this is a Buddhist, ep um, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> cosmology. So there you will only be born when you have practiced meditation. And that during your meditation, you have su suppressed, when you suppress the desire, anger, so on. Those who have samadhi will be born here. It's called form realm. Then, in this realm, too, many level. Finally, they realize even the form is a problem. Then you have formless realm, that they don't even have a form. And mind is constantly in meditation. So that's the three realms of the world in the desire realm. But he's not touched by desire. You know? Devataki Magyoba. Secondly, Buddha has the samadhi of the form realm. But Sukdagi Nyavar Magyoba, meaning he's not attached to the bliss of the samadhi. Um, Buddha is Buddha Buddha is not not in the formless realm at all because there there is no form and there's no teaching so it's difficult to benefit I mean this is very general yeah teaching so um, Buddha is free from all sorts of suffering. Buddha is free from suffering. Buddha is free from aggregates. Buddha is free from... Um, how did it translate it? Okay. Ketchen nam damba. Yeah. meaning sort of. Yeah, his speech and everything. It's it's always. Even though he's not calculating, it looks like it's calculated. Um, Dubanam Shindu Chepa. That's one of the name of afflictive emotions. 
so when so what is samsara samsara is not that not a place where i am born samsara is a situation that i am in so when i get angry i am bound by emotion i am you know like that desire so on so buddha is not bound by you know he has cut the rope like the young don't the number two buddha is free from suffering buddha is free from samsara buddha has crossed the river buddha has complete wisdom but that remains in the wisdom of the uh, com- complete um, but that remains in the wisdom of the buddhas of the three times meaning there's no sort of oh I-, i like this buddha more than others like that you know when we choose like that but in reality there's no difference in quality completely same but because of us we have medicine buddha medicine buddha is good when you're sick you know that was we, we think like we make separation like this but from buddha there's no medicine wisdom or something different um nangale debala minepa buddha doesn't remain in nirvana meaning buddha help comes again and again in samsara but buddha always his mind is always on the ultimate truth and but it doesn't mean that he's always meditating and not seeing the beings while buddha is on the ultimate truth he also sees all sentient beings Okay. These are the qualities of the Buddha. Then the Dharma is auspicious at the beginning, auspicious in the middle, auspicious at the end. Auspicious in the beginning when you first hear it. it's really joyful true it's true so it's the beginning of good times for you now <laughs> because you know, finally we hear oh that what is true it's it's good in the middle because the more you contemplate it makes more and more sense and it frees you more and more um, and it's good in the end you become buddha okay let's say that there is there is it has perfect meaning you know it's not just some sort of complex philosophy but useless not like that you know um even omni- omniscience is not actually important <coughs> as as um chandrakirti no uh, dharmakirti says um because somebody says how how can you prove buddha see everything you know can he sees behind the wall or something like that and or he can he see like 10 km away so he says this is not important for us 
if you want to follow someone who can see 10 kilometers far, why, why don't you follow an eagle? You know, for us, we follow Buddha because he teach four noble truth. That's why we follow him. And, and we, we, we call him omniscient because he knows everything that we need to do to become free from suffering. Others is not important. So Tanya Sangbo, it, it has the main meaning in the Buddha Dharma, not just that it just talks about something unnecessary. Sigdu um, Sangbo, the words are perfect. Madeba, it is completely different from any other teaching. Yongsu Dzogba, it's, it's complete. Yongsu mm. Dagba, yeah, it's uh, pure. Yongsu Jangwa, meaning it's, yeah, it's, uh, mm. um, how did they translate it? Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, this, it seems like repeated, but anyway, that is true. Chomdin de Jichwe Lekpar Songwa. Yeah, Yang, um, it is something that Buddha saw perfectly, Yang Da Bartong. And it is something that is without any um, pain or sickness. Dharma, you know, because it's, it's pure. Twitchepa um, Mepa, it always helps. Or, or we should say, it is always true. Impermanence, always true. True thousand years before, true thousands, thousands of years afterwards. Dependent origination, always true. Whether there is Buddha or not, Buddhist or not. So to chepa mepa, you know, it does. It's not like it works sometime, but then never the, tepa. Yeah, that it takes you to liberation. Di tong wala tenyoba. Naturally, that it's yeah. Kepa nam ju soso rangi rikbar chawa. True. Dharma finally is proven to you by yourself. You know, um, you have to contemplate. You must, you must meditate. When you get experience, real experience, not a dream or something. <laughs> they like don't. <laughs> Real experience, like a realization. So that's it. Then you you really know that it's it's really working. So it it can only ultimately it can only be experienced by yourself. Dharma is of two type. The, the teaching and the realization. So it's talking about these two. Chomden de jisung bechu dua lekbar tempa. It it depends. Um, it is. It depends, or it is according to Buddha's teaching of taming the beings. So it is renunciating, so to speak. Um, Maybe it doesn't work like renunciation. The term Nyepar Jungwa means it Nyepar Jungwa meaning um, getting away or getting out of something for sure. The, the translation is renunciation, right? I don't know if it's good enough or not. 
renunciation. Yeah, that that. Um, okay, yeah, it brings renunciation too. It takes you to the complete Buddhahood. None of the Dharma, even though it is taught to different people with different levels, the teachings never contradict. You know, not like the Stravaka teaching contradicts Mahayana like that. You know, Temba Yoba Jua Chabaus. Temba yeah? Temba Yoba. How did they translate Temba Yoba? So it is constant and it cuts the um, wandering. Because all the other state, um, or all the other sort of teaching, there's always something to do next. After, afterwards, this, this, this. But Dharma, when you practice it, when you become Buddha, that's it. Nothing more to do. Or nowhere else to go. Then the Sangha, the Mahayana Sangha, remains perfectly, remains perfectly on the path. Okay. Lekpar Jukpa, meaning, yeah. So they enter the path perfectly, completely. Rikpar um, Jukpa, meaning um, with, with seeing the, whatever, the truth or with realization. Tangbur Jukpa. Honestly, that their practice is honest, exactly according to the reality. Thumbar Jupa. Yeah, meaning um, teaching of one Bodhisattva will not go against teaching of another. So, yeah. mm. That's why they deserve to our veneration. They deserve um, our prostration. They are the field of merit. I mean, just a bodhisattva. Buddha said, if you look at a Bodhisattva with joy, thinking, ah, oh, that's a Bodhisattva. He said, that's more meritorious than, um, let's say, the whole world goes blind and you fix their eyes. <laughs> you know, they become blind. Blind well, and then you f you go and fix their eyes. Yeah, by with looking at a bodhisattva is not the same. So they're really field of merit. Yun Yongzu Jongwa Chempo. Okay, 
they can digest the offering. That's what he's saying. Yeah, because if you are not worthy, then you use the offering. It's a karmic debt that in the, let's say, if you're not a good monk, then somebody make offering thinking, oh, it's a good monk. And then you use that. Buddha said you will pay for it in the hell realm. So, so they cannot digest it. Bodhisattva, these, we are talking about noble beings now, not ordinary beings. So Bodhisattvas, these, they, they can digest the offerings of sentient beings. And not, not only that, they actually, when you do off, made offerings to them and so on, it really brings a lot of benefit. So they are the object of offering. The next line, Jimbini Sujurba. Um, but yeah, it is said that when Bodhisattva, if you practice generosity, one day for sure a Bodhisattva on a Bhumi will come as a beggar. We will not know. <laughs> we will not know. Kunduya Jimene Zujurba, so they are really objects of veneration and generosity offering. <laughs> what to do now? I thought he will fall down, but he didn't fall down. Anyway, so you have any questions? Please raise or else. No, but he really, all, it's almost 40 minutes. Do you have any questions? That's, that's good. Haben Sie etwas zu fragen? Good. So, I mean, please don't leave this like, a, oh, there was some day teaching and it's gone. Mm, this text is you have it, and it's not nothing about Sakta Kaju Nima. Sakta, nothing like that. It's sutra, and it is something we all recite. We all recite. So please recite this. You know. By yourself, sometimes um, bring Shaktamuni Buddha in front of your mind. If you want, with Sangha of Manjushri and our Lokateshwara and all, everybody present. Or it's just the Buddha. And read read this. Because read this. Oh, these are the qualities of the Buddha. You think. And when it comes to Dharma and Sangha, of course, the ultimate Dharma is the Buddha. So these are also Buddha's qualities. Ultimate Sangha is also the Buddha. He is in the form of a monk and so on. Mm, you know, so, um, yeah, that, that would be, um, it's really, I mean, it's uh, very sad how the Mahayana tradition has, has been 
um, sort of ignored and uh, we 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 are um, so our obsession with the Vajrayana, you know, what it did is that at the end we, we don't accomplish Vajrayana and we don't accomplish Mahayana. <laughs> because in some sutras, um, it teaches you, read this sutra for 15 day and night, like that, some I, I forgot how many days, like 15 and day and night. At the end, you will see the Buddha. Like that, really, in the Sutra. No, I don't know, any, I don't know anybody who practiced like this. And this is sad. It's really sort of uh, what to do, you know. Then, um, thank you so much for asking me to come here, and um, because of your asking, I got to read this text, <laughs> and now I'm going to talk about this many times in future because I realized that it's actually such a profound sutra. Um, of course, I, I will never understand its depth, you know, until we become Buddha. But... Um, Mm, it is, mm, I, I consider this as a, mm, I sort of mm, like offering to my teachers, you know, and uh, mm, sort of mm, to the Buddha, that this day we could have been doing anything, and we decide to just sit and talk about Buddha. In worldly terms, it's useless. You know, <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah. So thank you so much.